All right, here we are. We're back. It's really nothing else I need to do here, so I'll just head over to the exit, which is over here, this panel. Head back to the Seamstress's Union. Return to the Union. <coughs> despite, po despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Paco needs to help her through the door into the Seamstress's Union. Heads raise, and the front room of the bar falls strangely silent. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed-up face. She winces but manages to keep control as she breathes in s slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. You'd think Paco's eight charisma would just create such an aura of calm that she wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt or something, but I guess not. Taking a closer look, you see her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone held together by tendons and burned skin. It'll be a miracle if she still has it by the end of the night. That's pretty fucked up. Yep. Well, remember, they had those hell, like fire-breathing hellhounds. They probably set those on her. Right. That explains also why she's got the big claw mark. Apparently, the enforcers of, like, a gang crack house are not nice people, oddly enough. <coughs> All right. Here. Mrs. Kubota, remember, is the uh, proprietress of the uh, Seamstress Union. Right. <coughs> Mrs. Kubota is tending bar herself when Paco walk. Paco walk. Paco walk carries the mangled and bleeding coyote into the Union. As soon as the boss lady lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place gets quiet, fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, Coyote is the color of wet spackle, and there's something new in her eye. Fear. This woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kubota has her staring at the floor and mumbling. Uh-oh. Let's see what happens. Woman! How dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor! <laughs> Tough boss. Coyote. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kubota. I had a run-in that went... bad. Hence the whole only having half a face thing now. Did she look like that before? Uh, yeah. I think it might have been, like, 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 raw looking before, like it might have been redder, I'm not sure. But yeah, she always had, we've always, we've, not, we've always seen her with that, that mark on her face, yeah. I see. <clears throat> so, Ka, which I assume is Japanese, I can see that. Your arm is a mess. And you're tracking mud in here, young lady. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It will only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from my business. Hi, Mrs. Kubota. My apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. Cherry, uh, there's, there's our friend Cherry, Bump. Yes, ma'am. And tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Cool. <laughs> well, well, they said she probably wasn't going to have it anymore by the end of the night. You gotta... Yeah, do something about it. Yeah. Get rid of that arm. Buy yourself something pretty, sweetheart. Mrs. Kubota, I can't afford a cyber arm. I am aware of your financial situation. When you are healed, we will discuss the concept of Giri, the debt of honor. Now go. Bleed elsewhere. Yes, ma'am. So this computer is kind of interesting. On the one hand, she's a huge. She seems like a huge hard ass. But on the other hand, she's giving her a like you know she's you know paying to give her a free you know metal arm or whatever. So she's she's tough but fair. Here he is. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, and inclines her head to you. Domo arigato, Flandry. That girl is precious to me. It's not often that we see acts like these in the barons. Oh, I got a thousand yen. New yen. You performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. But we both know that words are mere air. Beyond my thanks, I offer you this remuneration. Please take it as a show of respect. Let's be polite. I'm honored, Mrs. Kubota. Thank you. You are most welcome. And I offer more than simple lodging. You will find that there is more to the Union than meets the eye. Megatron in the basement will provide you with... Below us... 
Below us is a small facility of Below us is a small facility available for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it, you'll find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, a fully equipped cyber dock, and a secure place to rest when the dreck hits the fan, as they say. This is place is a safe house, too? Indeed. Normally, I require a percentage of the runner's income for the use of this facility, but, as I said, you are family now. Oh, it's like the Olive Garden. Consider it on the house. When you're here, you're family. You're, you're robot-armed, quasi-Japanese family. To gain entrance, play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. Okay. New objective? Optional. Meet all the black market vendors in the safe house. New objective? Find the med bay in the safe house. Oh, we can still talk to her a little, it seems. How else may I be of service? Is Mr. Delilah here tonight? Yes, Mr. Delilah in the back bar. That's usually where he does business. You mentioned Coyote's Crusade. What is it? Coyote grew up in the Royale. That was the name of that seedy drug den. But managed to escape that life. However, her cousin was apparently not so lucky. He came to town about a year ago and fell in with the wrong circle. He was addicted to SIM chips. He was introduced to SIM chips and became addicted to BTLs. Which we discussed like sort of like virtual reality chips. Sim chips and sim sense is used for a lot of things. It's just like virtual reality technology. Think about better right. than life. Think about better than life chips is that like they're they're modified to be a lot to be basically affect the nervous system more powerfully than is safe. So like you get more intense sensations from them, but they're addictive and they they screw up your brain chemistry, could potentially cause like brain damage. <coughs> hmm. Okay. He came to town about a year ago and fell in with the wrong circle. He was introduced to SIM chips and became addicted to BTLs. Coyote has been tearing her way through chip houses for months now, searching for him and acting as a one-woman cleanup crew. If you don't mind, how did you get involved in all this? I am a former runner. Now I provide a safe haven and a marketplace for runners who need a trustworthy place to congregate and do business. Are any Johnsons or Fixers here tonight? I should I should probably um a, a Mr. John a Johnson is uh missed in uh in Shadowrunners, generally when a a Mr. Johnson is basically a pseudonym used by people who want to hire Shadowrunners. Hmm. The way the way it works is say, you know, you're 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 the head of some corporation and you want, you know, and something illegal done to a rival corporation. Obviously right. you can't do it yourself. So you so you have one of your um you know, you have you know have you have one of your uh, employees go out looking for someone to hire and that's the pseudonym to, he he'll traditionally use. It's um. So basically, if you're saying if you're saying you're looking for a Johnson, that means you're. That sounds filthy. But I mean, <laughs> if 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 you're looking for a person by that name, then that implies like you know you're looking for sh like a sh someone who wants to interested in hiring shadow runners. Yeah. If you want the J, as they as the kids say nowadays. And a uh, fixer. Uh, fixers are sort of like they can like like arrange for you to get illegal stuff. You can sell. Oh, uh, you could, or you can like they can hook you up with uh like like other like if you want to contract shadow like if you want to hire other shadow runners to join you on a run, or if you want to sell like if you've got some valuable d corporate data that you want to sell, they'll hook you up. They can you'll sell it to them and they'll find buyers for it. So they're like a fence. Yeah, kind of like a kind of like a like a high like a like a, a fence like a sh like a, a fence for high level corporate mega corp stuff. Yeah, or low level stuff too. But yeah, like a, they're like a fence and they're guy they're guys with lots of contacts basically. Lots of underworld context. Are any Johnsons or Fixers here tonight? In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Van Grass. He's often stage-side. Van Grass is most often a receiver of found articles, but he occasionally has work. So, you know, like you said, offense, essentially. I'll be going now. Okay. Well, now we know a little bit more about Mrs. Kubota. And she's sort of... She... She, she, like I said, despite her, you know, harsh demeanor, she actually cares, you know, very deeply about Coyote. Mm. Von Grass. Von Grass is busily talking on his comm leak, checking his heads-up display, and motioning to a runner standing nearby, all at the same time. <coughs> He's an intense little man. You get the sense that he likes to look busy. I'm Van Grass. Make it quick. This is good. Talk to me. <laughs> 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 he, 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 
It's like, it's like speaking to a telegraph or something. Mrs. Kabuta said you're a fixer. He still hasn't looked at you. He's going a mile a minute. Nothing for you tonight. Sorry. I'm doing a thing right now. Important thing. Talk to you later. Oh, hey, guy. One more thing. He covers his comling for a moment. Tilts his head in your, your way, but you can still see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence, too. If you got anything you need to unload, come see me. Nice. So, we can... I'm pretty sure that guy's a dwarf. It looks like it. In the, in the meta-human sense, not the has-dwarfism sense. Right. Well, here, here's the... <laughs> and here's our old friend, the, the world's least enthusiastic male stripper. <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> it's... I think he's doing the robot. But he, not any of the other cool parts of the robot. He, he's not, the one part that, he's like do he's like doing like the one. first like half second of the robot over and over again. He's like some like <laughs> maybe he is an actual robot, like he's some broken animatronic display. Have you seen that um Pillsbury Dope Doughboy commercial where the family is fighting over the um and then rolls like he, everybody's like saying why they should get it, and like the the son, like the little kid, is like I can do this, and he does like the world's shittiest robot, and the and then the and, and then the doughboy the dough like him. the cinnamon rolls shall be cut in half, woohoo! And then whoever <laughs> says whoever says no, don't cut them in half, is proven to be the rightful eater of the cinnamon rolls. Yeah. How, I assume that's how they resolve that. They, they don't. The little kid gets it. Perhaps the perhaps the Pillsbury Doughboy is not as wise as I as I had assumed. Then, Let's talk to Mister no. Clu Cluet. The hulking troll bouncer in his in the immaculate suit stands as impassively as ever. The a <coughs> the absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication that the man ever moves. He nods to you when you approach. Evening. I see Coyote is back, looking only a little worse for wear. We have you to thank for that. The having her back part, yes. You have the gratitude of everyone here, especially mine. Couldn't no. stomach, couldn't stomach lo losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. You feel protective over the people here. Immensely. Toward anyone who walks through that door, be they employee or patron. Unless they mean ill will, of course. Then their soul is mine! I mean, that, that would be pretty good security, having, having a bouncer who literally looks like the devil. <laughs> Mind if I ask you a few pretty, questions? You'd be pretty scary when you're drunk. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're drunk and, you know, the image is wandering around, you're starting to get the shakes. You hear anything else about Sam's death? People are saying it was the Ripper. But people say a lot of things about what they don't know, or what they don't understand. You know where I can find a fence? I think I think Van Grass is at the bar near the stage. Dwarf with a cyber eye. Can't miss him. See, he's a dwarf. Yeah. How long have you been working for Mrs. Kubota? I crawled in here after a gob after I goblet after I awoke. Mrs. Kubota took me in and gave me a job. I've been here ever since. Now what he was about to say is after I goblinized, which is a term used No, I mentioned no I mentioned like when magic started returning in like two thousand twelve or whatever it was. Some people started being born as like el you know, elves or dwarves, right? Mm -hmm. To human parents. The first orcs and trolls appeared about a decade later. When a when uh, a fraction of the world's population just uh, ran, uh, sort of spontaneously started to transform, basically, right. And now after that, they they reproduce normally. I mean now I mean now like if, you know an orc and an orc have a kid, and try not to think too much about the process. Then the child will be an orc, you know, you know. They, but when the when you know when the when this first started happening, people started you know like I said goblinizing, transforming, and this was. A lot of, a, a lot of, uh, it, I mean, this, you know, scared the shit out of people when this started happening, so. People who, who, got, who trans, who started turning into, you know, you know, one day you're a normal human, suddenly you transform and you look like that. They, they were not treated very well. Not surprisingly. All right. There was a lot of person and per persecution and bigotry against, you know, folks like Mr. Cluet, so. So you, so you can see why it would be a big deal to him that someone took him in. Should I should I ask him? Do you have to pay extra for a manicure on hands that big? He's not gonna fight you. I don't know. Well, let's hope not. It's not the size they charge more for. It's the blood under the fingernails. 
I should be going. Catch you right. <laughs>